Hello, hi, this is Pushkaraj and I'm Rohan Nag and this is Film Tech Kill. And welcome to the review of The Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, we all love the movie. Alright, first thing, absolutely fucking brilliant movie. You have to go watch it. After a long, long time, I've come across a movie which is cinematically so excellent that I had no option but to go watch it twice. Your take on it? I thought it was an average movie. Better than average, definitely. Somewhere I felt the story was a bit lacking. Pushkar disagrees with me on that. But as far as the movie is concerned, well, you go to see this movie for one thing and one thing only. The apes. You do not go to see this movie because it has good, interesting human characters. It doesn't really have that. It has good interesting apes. Apes which are so lifelike that my dad could not believe that it's all CGI. I mean it's all. There is no props. There was no physical ape present anywhere in this movie. It was all CGI and by God the CGI, the fur. Look at this. The eyes. The eyes. The story is in the eyes and they have gotten the eyes so perfect. I don't think it's long before they can do humans as well. They can do Navis. This is the same production company which did uh, Avatar. Yeah. Navis was pretty good but Navis were still not human. And if you see humans, they are not able to do it right. Somewhere you can see it's like apes they were who are apes and they were yeah. humanoid apes. You felt them, you emoted with them. I think I'll start, since there's lots of good things to talk about the movie, I'll start with the one thing that many people have criticized about this movie, which still I do not absolutely agree with, is that the movie is slow and boring, is what some random people have said. Some people who also watched it with me. The thing is, this movie is not an action movie, it's a movie that's a drama, it's about the emotions and the struggle and the conflict of feelings between apes and humans within the apes themselves and within the humans themselves and that requires time, you can't throw it into a pan, have a flash in the pan and book the stories out, no. The director, Matt Reeves, is perfect and bang on with this film. He has captured every emotion possible in that conflict. Every character in the movie is not just a character thrown in, oh this is a good character, this is a bad character, no. Every character is neutral, but they come out as good and bad depending on their circumstances and how they handle them. They establish this perfectly, every character has a reason to be, which is why as a script, this is perfect. No character is just thrown in for random reason. Everything has a reason, not just scientifically or logically, but even emotionally and you feel that angst for every character, you feel the amazing leadership of Caesar, the good in his heart, the kind of father he is, the kind of person he is to the other apes. You feel the kind of angst that Koba, the villain ape, has grown up in. You feel the fear that the humans have against these apes. Everything, everything, you can feel it and it's in, in the eyes of every character. The minute the camera goes to the eyes, you know you're watching a performance that cannot be explained in words. No dialogue will suffice what these characters' eyes demonstrate and the director has used this brilliantly well. Um, speaking of useless characters, I personally felt Gary Oldman was wasted. First of all, because you know how awesome Gary Oldman is. You have seen the Dark Knight trilogy. And he's wasted in this movie. I felt that he could have done more. Second thing is, I think his character was quite pointless. I mean, he no. was a generic leader character was there whose only thing contribution to the movie is blowing up something which is a spoiler. No, but, but if you but see, the, see the movie, he has his reasons for actually hating the no, I am just protecting your time. I have a problem with his reasons. I am saying his character, he had a character, he had a deputy and he had a radio controller. There are three characters. It's a movie that's already all going of, extremely all wrong. Of this could be just one person. Hierarchy is needed. That is how humans function. As stupid as we are, we all needed a hierarchy to feel secure and he has exactly mimicked that even when it's not necessary there is hierarchy that is what he's tried to show and he's hmm. done that perfectly well which is why yeah, I if you put it across that way uh, see for instance the ape uh, society you have Morris who is the pacifier and the educator yeah. then you have Caesar who is the leader Koba who is the sort of the general, general. he is the general actually yeah. uh, something that they have changed from other planet of the apes the gorilla is actually quite non-existent here they are not doing much, they are... Yeah, they are just a strong force uh, in there. I saw it only twice, like once when he captures that human, there is a gorilla who comes out, that's a pretty cool scene. Yeah. And the other one is when uh, they are getting all shot at and then one gorilla is going all so saving private yeah. on their ass. Yeah. 
एंड देन देर वॉज इज सीजर्स म्यूट वाइफ हु वॉज मतलब टिपिकल फीमेल कैरेक्टर हु हैज नो रोल अदर देन टू बी सिक एंड टू बी हेल्प एंड टू मेक अ बेबी एंड टू मेक अ बेबी टू इन फैक्ट बट या कमिंग टू द कैरेक्टर्स आई थिंक एवरी कैरेक्टर वॉज ऑसम लाइक the father son relationship ha oh, that was pretty yeah. brilliant yeah. even amongst the humans the kind of new generation family that these guys create mm-hmm. the hero the woman and the child who sort of adopted between them yeah. without anything That's being said yes. the the way new family is coming together it's brilliantly depicted it, it's a world where chaos exists and new, nuclear families or families that are born by blood are not true but for families that we create are true and he brought that chemistry out very well he has yes like apes have created the family humans also now creating the family and the characters were just so perfect the whole rebellion attitude that has been brought about amongst all the characters eventually even caesar becomes a rebellious guy he knows that war is inevitable the way they have developed it over time through the film is brilliant okay and i'm guessing This is a trilogy of films. This is a trilogy, definitely. Oh. I think, as many other critics have brilliantly put it, this is the Empire Strikes Back. What Empire Strikes Back was to Star Wars, or what Dark Knight was to Batman. Correct. So this is it. This movie is the peak of brilliance of this saga, and I think it leaves us wanting for the third one. And I bet the third one will be well worth it if the same director again. Or whatever it is, I am already peaked to watch the third one. I can't wait for it. The third one can be two things. Either it can be an all-out war between apes and man. That, that is bound to happen. Or, or they might be smart and not show the war and show a spacecraft Icarus, which they hinted in the first movie coming back. Yes. And seeing only apes and no humans should be found. And that brings us to, I think, the most important part in this discussion about Andy Serkis being Caesar. awarded. an oscar at least been nominated for just one just give him a goddamn oscar already come on let's see the guy has done king kong the guy has done golem and now he has done caesar in two movies you know, sometimes it's a curse to be ahead of your time we are in a time where people don't acknowledge that even this even the character that you see requires acting it it is a technology that modifies or rather reads your body language and translates it to cg for you but for that your body language has to be perfect what andy yeah. serkis has achieved in this movie in terms of his body language his expressions his movements fuck it he deserves an oscar all right everything that caesar's body language said was understood without words whether he's rising up whether he's giving a hand gesture whether he's talking to his son whether it's cowering down in front of someone or whether he's inspiring his people it's there in his body language this guy fucking deserves an oscar so people who rig stuff in the oscars bastards please just give this guy an oscar he deserves it all right We are of his time, and he's brilliant. And that will be it. I give it. I technically give it a nine out of ten, cutting out one point just because it got a bit slow as agreed. But then, through my heart, because I love the fucking movie, I'm giving it a ten out of ten. And this is a long, long time after Avengers that I'm giving any movie a ten out of ten. So yeah, that's my word for it. Go watch it. It's absolutely brilliant. And for my rating, surprisingly, I'm giving it a seven out of ten. Which is for me a good recommended film, but nothing that special. I rated nine out of ten for the previous one. This one somewhere for me lacked the, I don't know, the storytelling, the way the narrative you was. You got to be kidding me! You rated this one lower than the previous one. The previous one was. This better. one is a fucking the cinematic brilliance. Come on, this the is cinematic awesomeness. Started, the way he started his journey from being an complete. Kid to where he grows. That this is, is what, a story. This, this movie is what this a movie story is all about. Tell me, it has see, everything. You know what? Really perfect about the it. The problem with this is Caesar does not grow in this at all. Caesar does grow. No. Caesar in the beginning is against war. That is the whole point of it. In the beginning no. is against war. In the end, no, he right. says even, even it is he inevitable. Ends, he is inevitable, but he doesn't want to but fight the war. But he accepts it. But he accepts that it is an inevitable. But that is not. And he will lead his people. It, it is still the same Caesar. No, it's not. That it which is, is why it's perfect script writing. The character grows. From a guy who will See, not the, accept war, the, he becomes he, a guy who will lead. He does yes. grow on. I will tell you the only place that he does grow on is he finally understands that apes, even apes are like humans. Apes are like humans. Yeah. That is that true. That is there are three true. major things that change, change in him. What is the except? I like the previous one better. I I leave the moral of the story is for you guys to decode. Go watch it. I think you'll love it. Whether or not you rate it a seven or a ten, no, it's definitely definitely a definite must the watch. must watch of this year. So go watch it. I have a feeling I'm going to rate Guardians of the Galaxy higher. 
I have looked forward to Gary for today. I think I love the raccoon though. We leave that to another discussion. Please subscribe to our channel to get reviews from time to time that are unpaid, unbiased, and we also like this one. Sorry, one last thing. The damn poster of the movie is so goddamn misleading. You see the poster right over here? And it has an ape with a gun in his hand and a horse. Uh, and that ape is not the Caesar, it is and I thought I thought it was Caesar and then after the movie it's like, oh it's not, wait. Oh they were just kidding anyway, around. They just want to excite interest and get, yes. get people to the theater. And the bridge does not blow theater. up. Yeah. Which is sad. I wanted to see it blow up. Anyways, fuck it. Let's watch the movie. And that is it. Let's call Magnificent.